Hello, this is Jenny Fern, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the books I read in 2019. I like doing a whole year long wrap up of books that I've read, <laughs> but it it can be quite long, so I'd suggest putting this at a faster speed setting or something. Maybe maybe listen to it at 2x, maybe get a beverage. I have made a grave error. I do not have a beverage. I'm probably gonna take a break anyway to let the battery recharge so I can get one then. <laughs> so, so far this year I've read 58 books. Today is the 27th of December, so there's only a few days left, and I'm reading Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech currently, so I could very possibly finish reading that. I'm about halfway before the year ends, so that might be an additional book. This is, sorry, that's Gordon's Tale, um, my little cat. And also, the top of my head is gonna be a little bit cut off unless I go even further back because this is a window and I just don't want to get some glare in this, in that situation. Oh, I i didn't check to make sure I was in focus. Eh, it looks like it's in focus. I hope so, I'm sorry if it's not. So I'm just going through my book list. I keep a, my um, yearly list of books on Goodreads um, just by setting the end date having it uh, associated with my reading challenge. So I set a goal for reading 52 books this year. Um, the goals are not um, super serious for me. I just want to be continuously reading and um, I do it before I go to bed mostly and usually when I'm eating my breakfast as well. So I just wanna keep up a reading habit, um, which I have for a very long time. Now, several years, I read pretty constantly, and um, let me just give a recap. I only got um, Goodreads, I think, in 2017, so I read 40 books in 2017, which was my goal, 40 books, and then I set the goal of 40 books again in 2018, I read 59, so then this year I upped it to 52, because I felt fairly confident that I'd be able to do that, um, especially considering I don't read a ton of very long, involved books. I tend to like quite a lot of middle grade and then shorter fiction. So that's kind of the introduction, and then let's get into the books. Oh, I should, I should mention kind of a disclaimer, I guess. Um, in the beginning of the year, um, I think up until May, perhaps, I was reading a lot of digital library rentals, either um, like a Kindle rental um, on my phone. I don't, I don't have a Kindle. So a lot of the front half of the year will be books that I do not own a physical copy of. And then after that, um, kind of a goal associated in part with my Bookstagram account, I wanted to be able to take more pictures of the books that I actually own and in order for me to feel confident um, taking a photo of a book, I'd like to have read it and it would be even more helpful to have read it recently. So those were kind of goals in part with each other to kind of marry two of my hobbies, one photographing books and the other reading books. So towards the end of the year, I have read a lot more books that I actually physically own um, or that I just had a physical copy of at the time. So the first book that I read this year was Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. So this is the first thing I've ever read by Neil Schusterman, but I believe he's quite a popular author currently. Um, Dry is about a period of time <laughs> where um, California just runs out of water. Um, they cut the water in Southern California and there are people who are trying to survive when they don't have 
their typical access to water. So this one affects me kind of a lot because I live in an area that's actually quite affected by wildfires now, um, the past several years, um, and we've fallen into the oh shit, <laughs> we are actually affected by the actions of uh, humanity um, in, in this way. Um, so anyway, this one impacts me a lot. It is a um, young adult story um, and it is told by multiple perspectives. I actually listened to this as an audiobook now that I'm remembering because um, there were different voices for these different characters. I liked it. I gave it a 5 out of 5. Um, I thought it was a solid young adult, um, kind of very action-y story. Um, the next book I read was Memories of My Melancholy Whores by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This one was actually very short. I also listened to this. I think I was, I'm, I read a lot more audiobooks um, at the beginning of the year as well because if something wasn't available as a um, digital copy, I could just get like the audiobook copy if I really wanted to read it, like that kind of thing. Library rental systems are so great and accessible if they're available for you. So if you really want access to books, being able to digitally rent books makes them really accessible if you have a phone. Um, anyway, this book is gross and creepy, <laughs> and it's about this old man who, uh, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, it's about this old man who wants to have sex with somebody who's young, and it is gross. But I thought it was really well written, and I did enjoy it quite a lot, and I gave it four stars. I don't really remember it super well, but I do remember really liking it when I was reading it. Um, then I, I, I do this because I don't know why I torture myself like this. I read Gone Rogue by Marissa Meyer, the second Wires and Nerve graphic novel that has the characters from the Lunar Chronicles. It's not good. I wouldn't recommend. I don't even really recommend the Lunar Chronicles. I just read all of them. I read one of the novellas. I think, what is it? The one about the Moon Queen. <laughs> I, I don't like the series. Um, then I read Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong, and this is a poetry collection. I got very into poetry at the beginning of the year. I was very interested in it. It was also kind of a popular topic um, with Rupi Carr's um, like Instagram poetry stuff. I, I'm a little bit late to it, I think. But anyway, I read this and it was excellent. I gave it a five star. Um, then I read Player Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I adore Kurt Vonnegut. Very, very much recommend. I own no Kurt Vonnegut, which I don't even, I, I don't understand. I don't see them in thrift stores ever. Otherwise I would own anything I saw in a thrift store. Um, Cause he's probably my favorite author. Anyway, <laughs> to tone it down a little bit, Player Piano um, was very intriguing. Um, it has to do with automation of um, factories, um, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and the kind of who controls the dynamics in that world. Like if, if the outputs of a factory that's entirely automated belongs to one person, then that one person benefits from owning this automated factory. And the workers who would have worked there get nothing. And I think this is very interesting because automation can do a lot of good if we reap the benefits for everyone in society, not just people who own things. So I thought it was really interesting. It's an interesting concept. I just got a little bit bored with the characters. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars, which is low for Vonnegut. A lot of my opinions about the subject of automation are colored by the fact that I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, but I 
am also somebody who is interested in alternate versions of society where we do not have our current systems in place if that makes sense if that's an okay way to explain my perspective on things then i read milk and honey by rupee carr um this was super hyped and i don't i'm pretty sure it was a little past the hype when i read it um but i thought it was okay it was inspirational in the sense that I felt like, hey, I could write poetry, <laughs> which, um, yeah, it's interesting. I actually recently watched two videos by a YouTuber who goes in and dissects Gabby Hanna's poetry. She wrote a poetry book that was really kind of sloppy, I guess, um, and without a lot of intention behind it. And I then, have a new perspective on things in that that makes me think that I shouldn't write poetry, but this made me think that I could and should write poetry. <laughs> anyway, that sounds bad. It was fine. Um, definitely not as good as Night Sky with Exit Wounds. Then I read um, It Can't Happen Here by Sinclair Lewis, which is a um, kind of a, yeah, a dystopian um, view of if the United States um, had a dictatorship type of thing forming. It seemed very pertinent at the time that I was reading it um, with the political state of things in the United States and um, I do suggest it. I again was a little bit detached from the characters and um, found it a little bit hard to keep everybody in place like I, I got people mixed up uh, quite a lot in this in this story but um I think I should probably reread it actually because I I might have just like not been in a great um like attention to read it then I read In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang it's a uh, graphic novel and um it was not good or interesting in my opinion. It was very beautifully illustrated though. It's about like um, the economics of video game like mining I guess which is kind of an interesting concept but I didn't connect with it very much. Um, the next book I read was Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. So this was a book that I saw a lot on uh, Instagram and it looked really interesting and for some reason I had no idea that it was about cutting. It is about cutting and there's like a lot of mental health stuff discussed. It was very teen, very high school, um, which yeah basically I would have really enjoyed reading this book if I was in high school and if I was still in that mindset um but n now being an adult um it was okay to read i give it four stars uh then i read the sun and her flowers by ruby carr and this one was not interesting to me <laughs> i didn't really care that much for it i don't think i can relate a lot to ruby carr to be honest um i haven't gone through a breakup ever and i like in general I don't think I feel the same way about a lot of things as she does so it is interesting to read from that perspective but it is not something I feel very connected with um then I have this book I read Where'd You Go Bernadette and took one of my favorite photos with this book um that's on my bookstagram account Where'd You Go Bernadette is, um, I actually listened to the audiobook of this one too, even though I own it, which is kind of silly, but it's a, an interesting collection of like bits and pieces of, um, communication and journal entries and that kind of stuff, um, about, it's a, it's a fictional story about, um, the disappearance and all the events leading up to it of the mother of the child who's like compiling all of this information 
and her name is Bernadette. And she's an interesting um, person who had a very established career as an architect, I believe, and then um, fell into some depression and was just kind of trying to live in this somewhat surreal, um, suburban, like, housewife type um, environment where the people surrounding her seem a little bit vapid and um, they don't care about very interesting things. Um, yeah, I thought this was just a very interesting, compelling, um, and like I, I was very invested in the characters in the story. So I liked this a lot. I gave it a five star rating. Okay, I have to get it like real up close to be able to read this. So it's called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. This is a nonfiction work um, about introverts and studies relating to introverts, how they work, and um, a lot of information about like how they can work in a like a working environment. Um, so like do does an open desk concept work layout work for introverts or what do they have to add to a workplace that you know extroverts don't necessarily have um i found this interesting and applicable to me in my life because i am quite introverted i don't know why i said it like that i am quite introverted so pretty applicable i took a personality test and it said <laughs> the um, Myers-Briggs personality test, I took that and it said that I was 80% introverted, which seems like quite a lot because the other folks that I know who consider themselves introverted were like, I don't know, like 60% or less. <laughs> so that made me feel like I was a weirdo. But anyway, I, I am quite an introverted person. Yeah. Um, then I read Milkman by Anna Burns, and this is um, a story about Ireland during the Troubles, and um, just life for a teen girl um, who's kind of ended up being associated with somebody who's um, dangerous. So. It's, she's a really interesting character and she's, she feels very unheard and um, you know, like not looked at seriously, but I just, I adored hearing her perspective and, and, and hearing about this time um, through her. Um, yeah, I, I really liked it. I gave it four stars. Um, then I read the uh, A Wrinkle in Time graphic novel by Hope Larson based on the A Wrinkle in Time book by um, Madeline Langle. Never know how to say that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> I, it was okay. I, I do like um, A Wrinkle in Time. The, the other books in the series are hopelessly terrible, but um, A Wrinkle in Time is pretty good. I gave it four stars. It was good. Then I read the number one ladies detective agency by Alexander McCall Smith. This is crazy because I don't even remember having read this book this year. I thought I read it like some time ago, but I really liked it. Um, it's about, um, how would I describe it? So it's set in Botswana um, in Africa and um, it follows a very interesting woman as she tries to solve some mysteries um, going on in her area. And I really enjoy the character Ramatswe and like a lot about her. Um, I, yeah, I think it's really interesting. It reminds me a lot actually of the Shape of Water um, by, I forget his name but the Italian, like, mystery books. Um, it reminds me a lot of those, but it's with an interesting woman in Botswana. Then, 
I'm surprised I read this this year too. This seems like such a long time ago. I also read The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. This was my first time reading The Golden Compass. Um, I guess you would call it middle grade, but it does seem kind of like a little bit advanced, to be honest. So it's probably for like nerdy middle grade kids. So The Golden Compass is about a character named Lyra and her kind of getting wrapped up in this weird uh, fantasy thing going on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this book at all, my god. Um, she has very interesting parents who um, are doing weird things. Oh, here, an important part about it, it's a lot about religion and like not in a good way, like about the bad that comes with religion. So then I read The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and I really, really liked this. I actually listened to this as an audiobook while I was painting these walls in this attic here and um, I thought it was great. Um, it's about like um, p potential, I don't know. Um, it's about this this older man who is a, um, a butler and he talks a lot about the duties of a butler and wrapped up into the, the duties of being a butler. Um, you can see his life um, as like a human being and kind of the things that he's missed while pursuing his duties so strictly and and it's a lot about like aging and the potential life that you don't lead so thought that was interesting <laughs> then i read um oh i give it a four out of five then i read fantastic beasts the crimes of Grim grindelwald don't know why I read this. I think I needed to fall asleep really bad and wanted to read something stupid because didn't read Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, didn't watch it, didn't watch this movie. It was a terrible, <laughs> it was a terrible read. It was horrible. I gave it two stars. I, I don't even like, maybe the movie would be interesting, but the screenplay made no sense on its own. Then I read a graphic novel meant for children called Zeta the Space Girl by Ben Hatke. And um, I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I gave it four stars. And it's it's got like, I don't know, fun kid like sci-fi elements that I enjoy a lot. Then I read the next, is this the next one? Yeah. Then I read the next novel in the um, His Dark Materials series, which is what The Golden Compass is a part of. So this is, again, by Philip Pullman. And um, I thought this story was very interesting. Um, they go into kind of different regions um, of, and, and different, like, portals and stuff. It's hard for me to separate the the three novels um, because they are just such a big story all together that it's pretty difficult to parse them apart in terms of what happens in what book, but I did enjoy it quite a lot. I gave it four stars. Then I read Space Opera by Catherine Valente, and this is just a very fun story. Um, I, I would like to actually own this book and be able to read it at my own speed and I think that would help a lot because I I think I read this one as an audiobook too. It's a lot like the Hitchhiker's Guide books in many ways and then it has like the spin of being also, you know, in a different world from a different perspective. I thought it was great. Um, this is something that I feel like I would, I would write kind of, except that this author is very, um, she dives a lot into kind of description and is a lot lengthier, whereas I'm pretty terse. 
So I think that's my one thing is that this is quite a lengthy way of going about telling the story when it doesn't have to be. So this is when I started getting into pretty hardcore actually reading the books that I own. And so from here on out, I will be able to hold the books pretty consistently. So I read The X-Files Goblins. This is the first X-Files novel as far as I know. Um, and I have a few of them now. Um, this is by Charles Grant. <laughs> this is so hard. I don't really remember what happens in this. There is military stuff for sure. And there's murders, I remember. It's basically just like a, an X-Files episode, but written. And Dana Scully is not written incredibly well in this novel, to be honest. Um, the focus is on Fox Mulder as like, wow, he's such a good main character. Wow, look at him. When like, for me, Dana is like a very compelling main character in the series. And so I think this book got that a little bit wrong, but it's great if you like the X-Files and you just want more X-Files in your life, um, <laughs> which I think is why you would read extended novels of your favorite series. So very good. I give it, no, well, not very good. So I give this four stars. Um, most of it is just because I love the X-Files. I love the characters in the X-Files. And this has a ton of problems with it, to be completely honest, but so does the X-Files in general. So it, it's as good as the X-Files, um, if not a little bit worse. Next, I read a book that I've had for a very long time called The World of Null A. It's such a compelling name and it has such a compelling image on the cover. Um, and it's by A.E. Van Voigt. I don't know how to say it that last name. But anyway, um, this is a science fiction novel. It's quite old. Um, and I love reading older science fiction. There are a ton of problems with older science fiction, especially when they're written by men. This has a ton of problems and it is completely unsatisfying in the end. It is interesting in some ways and then it is completely unraveled and is completely uninteresting by the end of the novel. So anyway, not a good book. <laughs> Would not recommend. I give it three stars. I feel like I'm pretty um, generous with the stars that I give now. Um, I'd reserved The Amber Spyglass for my library. It's the last book in the His Dark Materials series. And so at this point, I actually got it from my library and read the whole thing. And I enjoyed this one quite a lot. Um, the books get increasingly broad in like the story of, of where it takes place, who's involved. They get, they get more expansive as the series goes on. And I actually think that's a very interesting aspect of the, of the series is that it gets very big, but then it closes very nicely. I enjoyed this. I give it a four out of five. Um, I think in whole, I enjoyed the His Dark Materials series more than the sum of four out of five on, I think, all books. I think they're, it's probably a five out of five series, but there's just something about it, I think writing-wise, that I wasn't wholly connected to where I wouldn't say that each individual book was five out of five, but I think as a series, it's very solid and really interesting. So, that's how I feel about that. <laughs> I read a short, very short story, uh, the story of Dr. Doolittle. This is interesting somewhat historically because it is a well-known thing. Um, it's by Hugh Lofting. The problem with this is that it's racist. <laughs> the problem with this is that it's racist and it is also very simple and isn't incredibly interesting. So I give this a two out of five stars. 
then I read Fight Club. Um, I love the movie Fight Club. Um, I think it's a very, very good movie. Um, and I very much enjoyed the novel as well. So I gave this a 5 out of 5. Um, if you've not seen the movie or read this book, you should probably do that because I don't think I can explain it without giving away things. So read this. Watch this. Uh, it is very violent and um, just be aware of that. Then I read uh, Life, the Universe, and Everything by Douglas Adams. This is in The Hitchhiker's Guide. I think this is the third book. I, yeah. So, anyway, uh, this one's pretty interesting. It's very much more plot-based in this novel, but I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the concepts and kind of the jokes in this one uh, quite a lot. And, um, I, yeah. They're zany. And just, I don't know, this type of storytelling and this type of world really speaks to me. And I gave it a 5 out of 5. Then I read Flatland by Edwin Abbott. This is a fiction about kind of geometry concepts and um, dimension concepts. It's a very interesting premise and it's a very old, it's very old, <laughs> which gives it, uh, I guess, some excuse for its society in in this world it, the society is just super classist and super sexist and that's the hardest thing for me to swallow with this one um but it inspires a lot of people um i i'm just annoyed honestly at reading older works at how like men can be inspired by them <laughs> but women can't <laughs> i guess um is one of my big beefs. I am a woman and I'm also a master's in mechanical engineering so I do get kind of annoyed at the um, bountiful opportunities for inspiration and um, just men have so much opportunity to be inspired by works that exist about math and science um, like science fiction and this um, and it is disheartening to be a woman reading these things being like oh shit I'm worth nothing in this world so that's what I don't like about this one but it is an interesting geometry exploration um, wish it wasn't sexist <laughs> okay sphere land no I don't own this one so Spheerland I actually got loaned to me from a work friend who was very inspired by Flatland. And um, I enjoyed Spheerland much, much more than I did Flatland, if only because women are treated better <laughs> as a marking of the time that it was written, but it is still has some issues about, about that whole thing. But I think Spheerland is really interesting um, and some of it is a little bit, um, childish, I guess, compared to Flatland, but I, I very much enjoyed it. So that's by, um, Dionys Berger. Then I read Toto-chan, The Little Girl at the Window, by Tetsuko Kuragani, Kur no, Kuroyanagi. So, anyway, this, this is actually written by a famous, uh, Japanese TV personality, and this is based on her own childhood um, at a school that she went to um, in Japan, in Tokyo. It's set during and around the times of World War II, um, which was when her childhood was. So there are elements of that that come into this story and make it very sad. But um, it is just a, a great look at childhood. Um, and the fostering of students who perhaps wouldn't do very well in traditional schools. So, I thought this was great. I gave it five stars. Oh, then I read... Then I read The Mary Spinster by Mallory Ortberg. 
and this is a collection of short stories that are inspired by um, other works. Most of them are fairy tale type works or um, yeah like The Little Mermaid and other things. <laughs> so anyway um, it, it's a darker twist on everything so it gets a little bit heavy at times reading them um, but some of these stories were very interesting and compelling ideas and all that and some of them just seemed a little bit gimmicky so I gave this a 3 out of 5 because um, I thought there were more bad than good but there were some really good ones in there. Then I read The Tale of Despero which is um, or was, when I was a child, a well-known and beloved story. I had not read it, though. Um, anyway, it's really interesting, very dark. It has several parts. I think there's four different main parts of this book, and they um, have different perspectives or different main characters. And um, then it culminates in a very interesting um, ending. It has uh, themes of, of light and darkness, so good and bad, <laughs> which it's, it's kind of like a dated way of viewing things, to be honest, but anyway, that's what's in this, and um, it's very dreary and um, a little bit upsetting. Um, there is child abuse, which I do not like, uh, obviously, and, but it is overall a, a very well put together and well crafted book and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read the third Nancy Drew book, The Bungalow Mystery. Um, so <laughs> I, it took me a very long time until I figured out that Carolyn Keene was not a real person and is just a conglomerate of other writers that have been chosen to pump out Nancy Drew stories for a publishing house. So I didn't realize how much of a cash grab Nancy Drew was. So I'll go, I'll just say like Nancy Drew inspires a lot of young girls and she is a capable young woman who decides to solve mysteries. She get in, gets into a lot of danger but gets out of it and that's all good and everything. The cover art is always very interesting, like the stories have compelling mysteries sometimes, but I just get that icky feeling now about Nancy Drew just being f made for money to steal from children, so gross. Um, this one is fine. Um, I don't know if you, if you read Nancy Drew's as an adult, you realize they're not very good and then you get all of the stuff about you know how they might be somewhat unethical and then you don't like them anymore <laughs> I give this a three out of five it was okay it's um I don't even know how to describe it it's just like a mystery about like if people are who they say they are and uh, about missing jewelry then I read Becoming a Writer by Dorothea Brand um, this is um, a uh, writing help book. It is somewhat old but gives pretty solid writing advice um, that helped me a lot in understanding um, kind of where I was going wrong when I was writing the first draft, I guess the first version of my novel um, Long Distance which I am currently working on and I feel a lot better about where I'm at with this novel having read this. So good, good writing advice, helpful. Then I read Ecotopia, which was a cover buy from a thrift store and um, it's by Ernest Kallenbach. And this, this, see now I'm kind of onto this kind of stuff, honestly, it's interesting. So this is like, if society were different and was more based on um, being environmentally friendly and um, living a more communal life. So this is basically that the, um, 
California, um, and Oregon, and Washington become their own uh, nation. And um, this is the story of a reporter, a news, like a journalist, who goes into this nation of Ecotopia um, for the first time since they seceded. So, um, it's an interesting exploration into their society um, and how they live and kind of the transformation of this man's opinion of, of what the society is like. And yeah, it's interesting. Living in Northern California, it is a, an interesting thing to read um, how this society is reimagined um, if things are just completely different. So anyway, interesting. Um, the main character is not super compelling uh, as a person, but I think the concept is interesting enough to carry it um, quite a lot. Then I read Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Um, so this was a loaned book from my coworker, and um, yeah, it's really interesting. I can see why there's a lot of hype around it because the characters are pretty compelling, and um, I think it would make a good TV show. I have not seen it. Um, yeah, overall I thought it was pretty fun, interesting, it was a cool world, cool concepts. Um, I wasn't like incredibly invested in the characters and there was kind of a lot going on in it um, for my taste. I like something a little bit simpler um, most of the time, but really liked it. Um, yeah, I give it four stars. This is a theme. I tend to torture myself with things that I'm, I know I'm not going to like just so that I can read them. Um, I tend to read Nancy Drew's when I'm feeling a little bit burnt out and just want to read a story because I read in order to fall asleep. Um, so I just will pick, will pick one up if I'm a little bit sleepy and don't want to pay attention a lot. So we got number 34, The Hidden Window Mystery. This one I actually kind of liked, to be honest. This one was pretty interesting. Um, there was slavery stuff going on, which was not good. Um, it wasn't treated very well. Um, but the mysteries in this story were kind of interesting. And the whole concept of the whole thing were, were just ridiculous. And I liked this one. Then I read Matilda by Roald Dahl. Um, I adore this book. I watched the movie for the first time this year, I believe, and I adored the movie as well. Um, yeah, I just, it's adorable. Um, I'm pretty sure I watched the movie before I read the book. I'm pretty sure. And then I did read the book. Um, I didn't read this as a kid. Um, I have mixed feelings about Roald Dahl's work. Some of it is very interesting and cool. Um, it's always a little bit dark and weird um, at, at points. Um, but this one, very cute. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I really like it. It's about a girl who has terrible parents. She's very smart um, and they don't encourage her in any way. Um, and she finds a teacher who has a, like an abused past. Um, and she takes her in, um, and they help each other, so. I gave that a 5 out of 5. Then I read The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, this was also loaned to me by a coworker. um, in part just because of the name, because I work with lathes, but it's a very interesting, um, like, kind of science fiction, um, more just like about dreams and harnessing dreams and changing the world and power dynamics and stuff like that. Super interesting concept and um, even though the characters, I still, I didn't feel very connected to them. I thought the, 
the execution of the concept was so interesting. Uh, I gave it a 5 out of 5. Then I read The Secret of the Golden Pavilion. Um, I read quite a lot of this while I was on vacation, and that was pretty fun. It's actually kind of nice to read uh, Nancy Drew when you're on vacation, just because it's so silly. Um, this one, they go to Hawaii, um, and there's a bunch of Hawaiian stuff that happens. And I give this a 3 out of 5. Oh, I don't have this one up here. I do own it. Oh, wait, no, I do. Oh, good. So then I read the second Adventure Zone graphic novel, um, Murder Art on the Rock Part Limited. Um, this is a train murder mystery um, based on the podcast, um, the D&D &D podcast by the McElroy family um, called The Adventure Zone. Uh, and I just adore The Adventure Zone, and I think the graphic novels are such high quality, great, um, yeah, very, very fun way of consuming this world. So, I'll give it a 5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Vampires and Lemon Grove by Karen Russell. Um, I just adore Swamplandia by Karen Russell, it's one of my favorite novels. And this is a collection of short stories by her, and my goodness, were they great! She is such a good writer, she has such good control of language, and she is able to describe things so beautifully, and um, she makes things like so haunting and like so deep. <laughs> it's some of these stories um, were quite disturbing to me, but they were so well crafted in their disturbingness that it was just great. It was just great to read. I would really love to read this again, and yeah, it's just excellent writing, well crafted, super interesting concepts for the stories. Um, very much recommend this um, story. Um, then my other coworker loaned me Sabriel by Garth Nix. Um, similar to um, The Golden Compass, I feel like this story was uh, popping off um, and I just never read it. Um, I, I believe it's also a part of a series, but I haven't and I don't really have a ton of interest in reading the other books. But um, yeah, it's about a woman, a young woman. It's like a, I don't know if you'd call it a kid's book or a YA, but if it is YA, it's like very well written um, fantasy version. Um, it, it, it almost seems a little bit more adult, similar to His Dark Materials, it seems a little bit more adult than what I would consider YA. But Sabriel um, is the main character and she is um, delving into a world of necromancy, um, and exploring, um, an afterlife type region, which is something that also happens in his Dark Materials series that I just love. I love that, like, the trope, I don't know what you call it, like, that concept. I just think it's so interesting. Anyway, gave it a four out of five stars. It was very good. Um, Actually, I feel like it might be five stars. I don't know. It's not like exactly me though, so it's four stars. I don't know. Then I read a bunch of goosebumps because they're silly and it was October and I had them. So let's get this stack. So I read Stay Out of the Basement, which is the second goosebumps, and it is about um, a dad who gets a little bit mad scientist y, and that's what I'll say. For the teaser for this one. Um, I thought this one was really fun and I enjoyed it quite a lot actually. Um, I like plants a lot so this was fun to read. Then I read Night of the Living Dummy. Um, this one is I guess a classic. It's one of R.L. Stein's most famous characters. Um, Slappy I guess. Although um, Woody, is that his name? is kind of like the main character of this book, or the main antagonist. Uh, so this is about some twins who get some dummies, and they're always jealous of each other, and that's the teaser for that one. This one's super well written, to be honest. It, 
it's kind of great. Um, yeah, I think this is one of like the best that I've read of Goosebumps. Um, and it's number seven. Then I read another Nancy Drew. So I was very clearly burnt out at this point in, on reading because I was just reading a bunch of kids shit. Uh, so this is The Crooked Bannister. And this one has the coolest cover art, honestly. It has like this beautiful pink cover and then there's a robot in the background. Like, <laughs> amazing. Um, but the mystery is kind of just lackluster and the robot is just there. I wish there was more about the robot, but anyway, it's okay. Um, then I read The Girl Who Cried Monster. This one, again, is a very good Goosebumps. Um, I adore Goosebumps. That is my bias. Um, I know some of them aren't great. They're very, um, gimmicky and they're very much constructed. Um, so there's definitely things to critique writing wise about Goosebumps, um, but there's a ton of them, they're super fast to read, they're fun to read, and it's more of entertainment content than anything else, so entertaining. Um, yeah, I really like this one. It's about a girl who discovers that her librarian is a monster. Um, then I read another X-Files book, Whirlwind. Um, this one is, uh, set in the southwest in Albuquerque, or near Albuquerque, um, and it has to do with people who are being murdered. That's what I'll say on this one, because I don't want to give away what's happened to them. A good book. I read it very quickly and I did enjoy it. Um, uh, X-Files are problematic. This one's problematic. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed it. Then I read Go Eat Worms. It's about a boy who collects worms who um, also has to enter into a science fair and he is jealous slash competing with another boy who um, has decided to also do worm stuff for the science fair. Um, this one I did not enjoy very much. I didn't think it was super interesting and I feel like the plot just kept like doing the same thing again. So anyway, not, not super interesting to me. Then Return of the Mummy. Um, I don't have the first, the first mummy one. So this is the second mummy one. This one is interesting. It's set in Egypt um, at an actual um, Egyptian tomb. And I, I don't know, this one felt almost distinctly like outside of the Goosebumps world. Um, and was just kind of weird. I don't know, this one was, this one threw me a little bit. Then Egg Monsters from Mars. Um, I think the cover art on this one is just impeccable and I want to really, really like it because the cover art is so impeccable and I do really like aspects of it. And I like that it's not like the same setting or the same trope over again, kind of like how Go Eat Worms was. But this one gets a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weirder than usual. So I'll, I say, I'll say that I like it, but it's strange. And then I read Bad Hair Day, which is about a boy who wants to be a magician and he wants to see the magic show of his like, um, his like favorite magician and things go wrong. This one was okay. Um, a little bit uninteresting. I don't know. I didn't feel super connected to it. I still have to photograph this one. I'm like, what am I gonna, I'm not a magician. What props do I have to put in that photo? Um, then I read The Emerald City of Oz. But I can't remember which book this is in the series of Oz books, but I think it might be like the sixth, something like that. Um, I've read all of the Oz bu books up until this one, and then I read this one, 
and I adore the Oz books. I think they're so interesting. Um, they're an interesting way to look at like American history and then with really fun fantastical elements and magical elements on it. I think it's it's a fun thing to read about. Um, the Emerald City of Oz is about um, a character who shows up in one of the earlier Oz books, uh, the Gnome King, and he is trying to put it together an army to attack Ozma, the Princess of Oz. Um, so they're going to attack the Emerald City, and so it's about gearing up on on like the antagonist side, gearing up for war and collecting various enemies to fight, and then on the Dorothy. Ozma side, um, Dorothy is going on adventures with her aunt and uncle and some other collected um, uh, earlier characters to visit unknown like towns and elements of um, like Oz. So fun places that we haven't seen yet that each have their own like quirky concept. Like, there's Miss Cut and Clip, who makes paper dolls, and she has all of these living paper dolls in a paper town. Then I read Moods of Future Joys by Alastair Humphreys. This is about biking around the world, and this is the first part, this is nonfiction, um, where he bikes from England to uh, South Africa. Um, and... This was suggested, well, this was loaned to me from a coworker, and I didn't even rate it because I just didn't like it. It wasn't for me. I didn't think the perspective of this man was very interesting. He didn't have like a ton of interesting things to say. I thought some of his opinions were um, not the opinions that I would have in the same, like, if I were in the same boat. I have no interest in biking across the world. I do not see myself being in this position. I don't find it super inspiring, and I think I would focus on completely different things if I were in this situation. So it was not for me, but it's probably for other people. So that's what I'll say about that one. I read The Hobbit. So that was really fun. Um, I've read this before when I was a child, so this is technically a reread, and I had a great time with it. Um, I So I have like a newfound like way of enjoying this book now that I am like I do consume D&D &D podcasts now with like The Adventure Zone and um, Dungeons and Daddies. Now I can read this and be like, this is like a D&D &D campaign. How cool is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a, a weird, interesting new way of, of reading this. I am interested in the coming year to read The Lord of the Rings, um, which I have never read before. So anyway, enjoyed The Hobbit. I give it five stars. Then I read the next Oz book, The Patchwork Girl of Oz where we get introduced to an entirely new character um, and several, just many new characters, honestly, um, where a boy who's, I think his name is Ojo the Unlucky, he's, I think, a munchkin boy who goes to a, um, a man who is uh, the crooked magician. He's practicing magic, which you're not supposed to do, only um, Glinda is supposed to practice magic. Um, and he ends up accidentally um, freezing his wife and Ojo's um, uncle? Yeah, Unc Nunky. Yep. So they head off on a um, trek across um, various regions of Oz to find the special ingredients for the magic potion that will bring their loved ones back to life more traditional in structure than the Emerald City of Oz where it's like a group of uh, of different folks going off on an adventure to find certain things. So it's more similar to um, the Wizard of Oz in that case 
and um, I, I do enjoy this one quite a lot. I think the new characters are really interesting. Of course, we get introduced to our old favorite characters, as often happens in these stories, but I think I actually liked this one more than the Emerald City of Oz, just because it seemed like a better crafted story. Then I read an old childhood favorite, which I just did a video on, Chasing Redbird, and this is about a girl who um, is kind of dealing with death, um, the death of her um, young cousin and the death of her aunt. Um, spoilers. Um, and uh, she's trying to kind of become her own person um, in a household of a lot of children. And she does this by clearing away a path and it is a, a very interesting read and I liked it a lot and um, I felt like I could relate to the main character a lot and uh, yeah I just I thought it was very touching um, well written and insightful and the last book that I've finished so far in 2019 is Woman on the Edge of Time by Marge Piercy so I got quite a far way through this book when I read it in high school, but I never actually finished it. So I actually finished it this time, and I think I'm in a much more accepting place in my life where this book would actually make a pretty large impact on me in the sense that um, I would just see it in an entirely different way when I was back, like back when I was in high school versus now. And it's about this woman, um, Connie, who is um, Mexican-American and who has uh, had history being in mental institutions and she is then put back in um, through a circumstance that is like completely unfair and she has been getting contacted by somebody from the future and um, the future that is mostly focused on in this book. It's not a consumeristic, uh, materialistic, um, not super capitalist, um, not um, unequal. Um, it's very egalitarian. Uh, it, it focuses a lot on, you know, being sustainable, um, you know, making your own food and dealing with your wastes. Um, so at this point in my life when I am learning a lot more about permaculture and I'm learning a lot more about, you know, different elements of sustainability, I think this was the perfect time to read this. And it also goes through a lot of injustice for, um, like, people of color and minorities in the United States. So it's hard to read in all of the hardship and the very real uh, just dystopian reality that we live in currently and people who have been in, like incredibly affected by like just so dystopianly affected by the literal current state of the world um, it's it is hard to read because it just puts into perspective how much we suffer for no real reason as a society, we have decided to make a lot of people suffer um, just for a few people to be incredibly comfortable. And it is a hard thing to think about. Um, and just at my current state in life, I'm more and more and more um, aware of the fact that the way the world is is um, not necessarily the way that the world should be and that there are alternative ways of living that are probably um, better for many 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 people so um, that's like my main takeaway from this book and I think from me reading in high school I had a much different opinion um, formed from my limited experience and um, I don't think I would have nearly the same things to say at that time as I do now. So anyway, I do highly recommend this book. It was written in the 70s and it's set in the 70s but a 
ton of what it speaks about has just so much to do with what we are currently dealing with today. It's, it's an incredibly insightful and in-tune book um, with reality. It's very grounded. Um, yeah, and I just, I do really recommend this. It's, it is, it is hard to read sometimes, but I think it is necessary. So, I will leave off on this one. Um, and, I mean, I don't agree with every single thing it says. Um, I, yeah, but I think it's a very compelling thing. I am reading Walk Two Moons currently, so I might finish that before the year ends. Um, as like a little preliminary review, it made me cry last night. Um, it's very touching, it's very similar to Chasing Redbird in its uh, poignancy and closeness to reality um, about things that matter and um, insight into uh, relationships and how people feel um, from a child's perspective. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, anyway, if you've read any of these, let me know what you thought about them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions of things I should read based on what I enjoyed from the selection of books that I read, um, let me know as well. Okay, well, thanks for watching.